good morning so i am officially a little over what day is it today wednesday um oh, two and a half weeks post-op from my kidney donation and i wanted to make a video talking about what i went through during the first two weeks of recovery and kind of things i didn't expect and just give a good holistic review of what it was like because that was one thing when I was doing my research that I didn't really see a lot of people talking about that um, a lot of there was a lot of info about becoming one and things of that nature but um, and even during the process and once you talk to all the doctors and have all your tests done um, people described to you what genuinely is supposed to happen to you but these people are they've never gone through it that I'm aware of I mean honestly I guess the doctor probably could have given you know an organ away but I don't think they did because of the process in which they explained it and then what it actually felt like um so going in um you know you go in day of surgery I had to I had to be there at 5 30 in the morning um very early day I obviously went first and then Jim went after me. My surgery took about three hours and it took me about I think an hour and a half to come out of it. Um, all of that's going to vary. Um, how like how fast you recover depends on who you are um, and how you kind of take to the anesthesia and really just how it affects you. Um, I did really well with the anesthesia. Um, you know didn't have any issues with going under coming out um it was a good surgery uh funny story though i did ask when i so when you go in there they give you right before you go into the or they give you the i don't know what the drug is but it, i call it a cocktail and it makes you a little loopy going in and when i was in there and the anesthesi anesthesiologist was talking to me i asked him to take a picture of my kidney and he did <laughs> so um, I got to see what it looked like which for me I, I you know I'm interested in the medical field and things like that and um, so I thought it was really cool but um, so yeah so coming out of surgery uh, was a little bit of a blur um, you know once you were once you're in the recovery area and you wake up and you're there for a little while they transfer you into your hospital room where you can have you know visitors come in and um, you know, and it hurt. I mean, obviously, they're cutting through um, your stomach muscles. So you can't really see because the lighting in this room sucks. But I have two small incisions here and then a longer one right here. It's like a C-section, but only about that long. So, um, and it hurts. Um, I wasn't able to use my abdominal muscles at all still can't um very much um so one thing to kind of brace yourself for is really using your arms and your legs a lot to move like to sit up you know normally you just use your abs but in the hospital that i had to use my elbows and then physically push myself up um you have to have a lot of help to move around you can't really reach for things um you know, so it, it's tough being mobile, you know, and that's a big reason why you want to make sure that if you're going to have the surgery, you have support. Um, I had, you know, my husband was there for the weekend that I had my surgery. My dad was my caretaker for the first week, my mom the second week. Um, and you need it. You need that. Uh, as far as, though, um, how I felt, uh, you can't go to the bathroom, you can't pass gas, you have this stomach bloat that is unreal. I looked like I was almost full-term pregnant um, because when they do the laparoscopic surgery, you know, they have to have, you know, I guess space, and so they fill that cavity up with air, and that air sits with you, and it... I'm still not, my stomach's still not all the way flat like it was before, um, so I'm still dealing with a little bit of that, but, you know, my, my digestive system is finally back to normal, I think. Today's really the first day that I've had that, 
haven't felt nauseous. Well, I haven't felt nauseous yet. I also haven't done anything today. Um, you know, I, um, I'm jumping ahead. So anyway, so the first couple of days, you, you don't want to eat. Um, they actually put you on a clear diet until you um, prove that you're going to um, be able to handle eating well. Um, I drank a lot of chicken broth, which I found that I actually really enjoyed. Hang on, my computer's about to die. Thank you. Um, but um, I ate, yeah, a lot of chicken broth. I what a peanut butter and jelly was you know something good for me to eat when I first started eating. But food was tough, and for me that's really hard because I eat a lot of food. I love ice cream. I love sweets, um, and I still today can't eat sweets like. The thought of eating anything with sugar in it makes me nauseous. Like, almost how I imagine people when they're pregnant, they're like, this smell of me. That's how I feel about sweets. Um, it sucks. <laughs> um, but uh, they had me up walking uh, the next day. Um, actually, no, even that night. I went on a, you know, on a walk with one of the nurses, and it was a real slow walk. Um, you know, but it was in my little hospital gown and, uh, you know, but it happened, you know, it, it, walking was the best thing that they told me would help, you know, alleviate all the gas in my stomach. Um, they'll tell you about, um, shoulder pain for whatever reason, the gas, I think it affects the vagus nerve, which runs, you know, into this region and... I didn't have much of that. It varies person to person. Whenever my shoulder did start to ache, though, I would just get up and kind of walk around, and it alleviated that. Um, but my whole, the incision site was numb, couldn't feel much of that. Everything that I felt in the beginning was digestive issues. Um, anytime I would eat anything, it hurt, man. It hurt. Like, you, I could literally feel the food going through. The difference, like, I couldn't, like, feel it, but I could tell when the different stages of my intestines were working, and that was something I wasn't expecting, was literally the pain of eating. Um, breathing was tough. They give you this machine where you have to, and that's to help um, combat, you know, pneumonia, which I guess is something that's um, kind of common after surgery if you don't take care of your lungs. Um, but breathing was tough. For whatever reason, I got the hiccups a lot, and hiccup, hiccuping, sneezing, coughing, I'd rather just be shot in the face. Like, those were terrible. Those were terrible. <laughs> um, but my advice, they gave me a little pillow. Mayo, Mayo's funny. They gave me a kidney-shaped pillow, a shirt that said, like, I'm a kidney transplant donor, or I'm a kidney donor. But anyways, um, I took that pillow, and whenever I would do that, I would hold it against the area, if I was going to sneeze or whatever, and that helped um, kind of keep things in place. And also being hunched over, your muscles aren't contracted. They're really loose, so it's a little bit easier on them. Um, but, so I was in the hospital, though, for two days. Got out on the third day and just kind of hung out. Um, I had brought all my cross-stitch stuff to my dad's house to, you know, anticipation of being able to do that, but I couldn't because... I couldn't hold myself erect. Like, I had to be laying back or laying down. Um, laying on your sides hard, which for me, that's my, my natural sleeping position. Um, I wasn't able to really sleep on my side for about four or five days. Um, but one thing that I do suggest, uh, for me in the hospital, I brought clothes because I didn't want to stay in those that hospital gown. So I brought a really baggy shirt and um, a pair of sweatpants, um, real light ones because I also had really bad hot flashes. Um, I'm still having those for whatever reason. I don't. They didn't warn me about anything like that, so that could just be person personal to me. But I would just be fine, and then all of a sudden I'd be so hot, I'd be sweating. Um, so I brought a pair of light sweatpants and. One thing that I wish I'd have known was to bring 
I don't even know if these are like a really a thing. I just have the, a couple pairs of underwear that are almost like high waisted. I don't know if I'm just pulling them up really high, but it went over my incision, the bikini one, because as your body kind of starts to wake up, that it feels weird. Anything touching it, it's like, ah, you know, it's not painful. It's just weird. Um, and having those underwear that go over it really helped from like your shirt rubbing it, your pants rubbing it. I have my underwear up and my pants low so that way the incision kind of sits in the middle and that's been most comfortable for me. Um, now it doesn't really affect me. Um, two weeks out, you know, it's okay other than the shirt rubbing it just kind of has like a weird feeling but it's not so bad. Um, so the first week at my dad's house though, couldn't do a whole lot. My dad has this gigantic truck and I would go run errands with him. Um, being in the car was really hard, uh, bouncy. I kept that pillow with me. Um, I would put it in between my, my stomach and the seat belt. And then that way if he went over any speed bumps, I could hold the pillow close to me and it you know, wouldn't hurt as bad. Um, but I would advise if you cannot ride in a car for at least a week or so, I wouldn't because it's, it's not pleasant. Um, it's not unbearable, but it's just not something that if you can't avoid it, I would. Um, and then, let's see, what else? I started getting my appetite back within that first week. No, that's a lie. I s barely have my appetite back now. Um, I was able to tolerate a lot more um, food. Um, more, um, like, savory foods, I guess is the way to say it. Um, salty stuff, meats. That was what I was able to, to really eat. No sweets. Um, and then I flew from Florida to Indiana, which was one of the worst things I've ever dealt with in my life. Um, I got my flight from JFK to Indi to Indianapolis was canceled and Delta is just a piece of crap and just experienced like a really awful time with that. Um, ended up walking like 10,000 steps on accident. So if you have to go somewhere, just try to get, you know, no layovers. Um, but it was tough. I got a wheelchair at the airport, though. They wheeled me around. Um, you know, prepare for that. Got to mom's. I felt good. Um, was out of pay meds at this point. I had a couple days where I was so nauseous. Like, I couldn't. I, I would go. My mom went and got um, some of the sushi grade. Uh, not sushi grade, but uh, the, the ginger that you eat with sushi. I love that and ginger is something that they say helps um, with nausea so I would sit there and just literally eat pieces of that. Um, I was drinking smooth move tea still wasn't having good bowel movements after this was you know almost two weeks. Um, I was taking the stool softener but my digestive system just wasn't doing what it was supposed to. I still wasn't hungry. I was still feeling nauseous. It just my digestive issues were very prolonged up until like yesterday like today I feel good like I'm not like hungry but I'm I feel good today um, which makes me happy so um, I don't know like I I think I was pr as prepared as I could could have been but you know, it's one of those things that you don't really know what it's gonna be like until you go through it and people can you know warn you you know all day about you know what it's going to be like and, and what's going to happen but it's going to be different for everybody it's super weird that my digestive stuff and my appetite and whatnot are the way they are i called and talked to them and they said that you know i drink about a gallon of water a day that's me normally um so i know i'm drinking enough water you know i'm taking care of myself i'm not overdoing it um yesterday was the first day since the the flight day that I hit 10,000 steps but it was because I wanted to and I feel great today um, so walking definitely does help it's hard but it's one of those things that you just kind of have to push yourself to do um, 
not overdo it push but you know you got to get out there and you got to walk um, I'm fortunate enough I have a treadmill in my house so even if you know I live out in the country so there's not a ton of places to just like go walk because it's all like really windy you know backcountry roads but I can walk on my treadmill so um, but it's one of those things too that you know even in your most painful moments you think about you know what you did and who you helped and it's worth it everything's I'd go through it ten more times you know because it's just it's such an awesome gift that you can give somebody so um, if you guys have any questions just put them in the you know the comments below um, but overall you know it, it was a pretty decent experience I guess it could have got, gone a lot worse you know I've seen way more major surgeries I mean organ you know removal is a major surgery but it wasn't as debilitating as I thought it was gonna be so if I could give you guys any tips um, try to you know a couple weeks beforehand you know make sure you're eating well um, my mom actually told me that it, she it, she wish she'd have thought about it that like three days up until the surgery start taking stool softener and it'll help you um, you know kind of get back going afterwards um, and I think that's really it. The stuff they have you drink before the night before is awful. It ma it made me bloat so much and uh, made my stomach hurt so bad. So, but anyways, I think that's really it. Um, so, if you're not you know willing to be a living organ donor, that's totally cool. Um, but think about giving blood or think about even just being like you know an organ donor on your license for if you die. You know, you could save a life. There's a lot of people who need organs out there, and um, you gotta get them somehow, I guess. So, anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and talk to you soon.